Monday. Hope you guys are doing well. Let me know if you come on and say hello in the comments. I did a recent video on a different uh, page and I didn't see until afterwards some of the people that had joined. So be sure to say hello in the comments. I'm going to see if I can find that um, on my other device. You see in the title it says four important things about team building. So I normally come on when I feel led and oftentimes that's through connections with other business owners or conversations that I'm having with clients who are coming to me for support. And team building is definitely um, one of them. So it's a super important factor, especially if you are either a brick and mortar business uh, owner or even if you're a coach or consultant and you're looking to hire people and um, wanting to transition more into the role of visionary and also to create a new space of time for yourself. So you're wanting to create a time rich business. One of my top five values is freedom. And so many of the people who come to work with me have that same value embedded in, you know, why they've opened their business. And a soundboard for that oftentimes is hiring help. And so if you're here and hiring help is either in your future, you've already started, or you know that is your next move, this broadcast is going to be really amazing for for you. I want to talk about some important things as it relates to team building because if you have this business, maybe you have maybe you are a service provider and you're wanting to duplicate yourself as many times as possible uh, in other people so that you can transition into a new role in your business, maybe where you're more so coaching your staff and you're the visionary and you have the time the energy and the effort to actually implement bigger things in your business when working more as the operator than the owner has not allowed you to do that. And <clears throat> I don't know if I talked about this on video, but it's, it's been at the forefront for me in, in many ways. And I, I know I've made a post talking about how the words owner operator used to be this great thing to put on your business cards or even your bios on social media but at some point you know owner and operator is not necessarily goals when you realize that the main bulk of your business is dependent on the work that you do which more than likely is not the reason that you opened your business you may have opened it for more freedom whatever that looks like to you but when the business is only really making the bulk of the money when you're making money over time, if you've been in this thing for a season, um, it begins to get exhausting. Um, you've added all these different things, maybe different services, different products, different things to sell. And, you know, it seemed to work for a while because you're like, okay, I can make more money if I start selling this or offering this or creating this course or whatever the thing may be and then you realize that managing it becomes the biggest issue which often leads to burnout and exhaustion and so a team is is a beautiful beautiful thing when I opened my brick and mortar service based business the first okay so I open and then in two years I had my daughter and my daughter had a respiratory infection that as a new mom scared me you know she had gone to daycare and she got a respiratory infection and so I just went part-time for almost a year eight months to a year where I think I went into my brick and mortar business two days a week for like maybe two to three hours tops and so how on earth was my business still maintaining all of this time it's because I had staff I had customer care coordinators who handled you know our phone and client care and then there were other staff performing services and so that was a lifesaver for me that was something that of course I would never have expected but I know I would not have been able to afford only working a few hours a few days a week had I not had a team now had I had the team that I had when I very first opened, I'm not too sure how well it would have done. And 
I was probably three years in at this point as it related to hiring and so my systems and all of those things had grown and changed tremendously because my first year of hiring I used to say things like um, the staff doesn't want to work this new generation everything was focused on you know what the staff wasn't doing and the fact that they weren't performing up to my ex expectations in that first year and I know it was God who gave me a download and said you hired these people and so it was clear to me that I needed to develop a new way of hiring I need needed to learn to hire differently so if you are the owner and you've been feeling like maybe your staff is not motivated they're underperforming things of that nature you have to understand that everything falls from the top and so if you don't shift your mindset about it you will continue to get the same results as it relates to the people that you're hiring or there will come a point where you just say I'm not hiring anybody and you downplay the vision that you have for your business so learning to hire differently is going to be your number one thing because realistically I hired those people who seemed unmotivated I hired those people who originally were underperforming so there had to be something in my hiring system that was off so your team you begin building your team before anyone ever walks in the door of your facility or ever joins you virtually in your coaching and consulting business the hiring process begins before the person ever gets there right and so there are many things that we can of course say this person isn't doing or this person doesn't seem motivated to do but who are you hiring so here are four things that are important to know about team building and, and let me say this so when I realized that everything fell from the top whoever came in the building that was working with me were people that I handpicked and hired see when you shift the responsibility from the other people to you as the leader you now take back your power and so in me learning to hire differently I created a hiring framework that became like tremendous for my business my next staff that I hired were with me for years they were not underperforming they were over delivering and they showed up they didn't have excuses the better I got at hiring the better I got at implementing the system the better things went in in my company and in my business and so the first thought is to shift your mindset and say how can I learn to hire differently how can I learn to hire differently so one of the things I did I created um, an interview process um, which has a, an entire system to it but within that interview process there were 36 interview questions that I asked every single person that came in for an interview now 36 may seem like a lot of questions whatever you got to do what works for you but it has worked tremendously for me and for the people who I have um, shared the framework with with their business one particular company was earning about a hundred and forty thousand dollars per month um, but even in that they were struggling with hiring that was the thing that they talked about often I shared my framework with them and they almost doubled this so they were at like 240 they went up about six figures in about three months because of a different hiring system so when if you think hiring is no big deal if you think I'm just gonna hire because I need somebody to fill this space um, it's it's a big deal it can make a big difference in your business your hiring structure your the whole process so um, for me I had a policy and procedure manual right so it was clear I even had a framework for when that was given to them and all of the processes for that and it made a big difference orientation all the things but these were things that um, you know before because I didn't understand hiring it was just let's hire some people this also meant that I needed to dedicate time to training 
right? Because some of the things that owners complain about are simply things that they haven't thoroughly trained people on. And we got to take ownership of those things. So let me get into uh, the four things. I, I created the framework that I created for hiring. I used to offer in a guide. <clears throat> I no longer offer it in a guide anymore, but my um, private clients who come to work with me, I walk them through, you know, if their strategy that they're wanting to work on is hiring, they get access to um, my policy and procedure manual as a template, job descriptions, uh, and this hiring framework. So I want to talk about four things that are important as it relates to team building. Number one is clarity. Sometimes the staff isn't clear about what your goals are, what your vision is for your business. And if you don't have a vision, then number one, you need one. You need a vision for your business. Your vision is that thing. When I, my staff knew what the vision was, they knew what the mission was. And I know it, it seems kind of technical to be talking about a mission statement and all of those things, but it's the soundboard for your business. Whenever I had staff meetings, it, those things were reiterated during those times. So staff meetings are also an important part of your process. And a lot of people wait until things are falling apart to have staff meetings. And then the way they're conducting the staff meetings makes staff unmotivated to come in here what you have to say. So my staff meetings were only about what was going to take us to the next level. This requires you as the owner to really take a new position in your business. And if your focus is on operating more than it is on owning, it will be difficult for you to maintain, number one, to even hire a good staff, but for you to maintain them. This is you stepping into a new role of leadership. So one of the first things for an, building an amazing team is clarity. This means that you have a vision. Things like um, pay structure, your, your meetings, they need clarity. And if you aren't clear, if you don't have the time to sit down and get clear, then how do we lead a team? How do we lead a team? Um, number two is commitment. So staff needs to know what they are committing to. Listen, we got to be honest and say, have I done a great thorough job of being clear, number one, to my staff about what they're committing to? And if you don't have a vision for where your company is headed five, ten years from now, then the likelihood of being clear um, and letting them know what they're committing to is, is slim, right? So clarity, need commitment. So of course you need commitment from the team, but they need to know what they are committing to. Um, how do you show up? Are, are you training staff? Um, are you giving clear directions and instructions? Are you clear? Right. Um, the next thing needed for team building is a culture. And culture is about your values. Many people, have, I mean, I've been talking about these things for quite some time. And I know they seem like things that really aren't going to move the needle forward. But when you have a big vision, when you're wanting to run a multiple six figure, possibly million dollar business, these are foundational structural things that if not dealt with, right, um, it really makes or breaks whether or not you experience the level of growth that you really desire in your business. Now, most owners, especially service-based business owners, open their business from a skill set they knew, not from being able to run a business because your skill set and the business are two different things. You can be absolutely amazing at a skill set but not know the ins and outs of business and go to open a business and feel because the skill set that you are doing is the thing that brings in the money that it will also grow the business. It may grow your clientele. It may grow your customer roster, but it is not the thing. Your skill set is not the thing that will grow the business. Your skill set alone won't do that. And so it's important, you know, you're wanting to do big things that you take the time out to learn how to hire, how to build a team. And this means you shifting from operator to owner. 
Now, I'm not saying that you just got to stop servicing clients immediately, but there does need to be a shift and a change. A lot of people think when they think scale, scaling their business, they think we're just getting ready to go to the top. And that does happen. But there is a slowdown process that you have to take to really assess the ins and outs, the foundational things about scaling, which is your systems. Hiring is a system. Getting clear on that, getting a, a foundational standpoint for that, that will allow you to handle all the new increase. So imagine you hire more staff, but you don't have systems in place. You're really just piling things on to, let's say sand, right? Are you gonna build it on the rock or sand? Is it gonna be rock solid or, or shaking? So your hiring system is huge. Your team building <clears throat> abilities and efforts is huge for you growing an amazing team. So your culture will include your values. It will include your values. If you aren't clear on that, if you don't know how to um, relay that message in your hiring practices, your hiring process, all of those things, it's very likely that you're going to be unsatisfied with the team that you're, you're getting in. So this means here and again, listen, your focus has to shift from being the operator to um, the owner. One of the things uh, super important for culture is understanding who you are as a brand. Now, this is where, and I've heard so many people say don't focus on the brand because many people think that your brand is your website, your logos, and your pretty pictures, but that's not your brand. Those are just aesthetics. They're pictures. They're, it's a logo. It's a website. It does you know, it may attract some people to your business, but it doesn't mean that you're going to keep the people. Your brand is more of the internal aspects that most people don't want to look at. <laughs> um, they want to get to the money, but that is where the money is. It's in your brand. So your culture and everything is created by you understanding who you are as a brand. Not only does it attract clients, but it also attracts what type of staff is attracted to working for your company, for your business. If, if you are uncertain about your brand and your values, how do you hire people who are in alignment with that? And then um, lastly, and one of the things, okay, so one of my top five values is freedom. So I'm going to show you how this rolls over into hiring and things of that nature. So one of the policies um, in my policy and procedure manual one of the things that I offered for the people that I hired was personal days. So these were days they didn't have to be sick. They didn't have to go take the baby. They didn't have to come up with some reason why they couldn't be to work. Because I just believe that there are some times in our process where we need a rest day. And it doesn't need to be because anything major is wrong. So those that was one of the things in my um hiring practice that I offer my staff. Now, let me tell you the crazy thing about it. Nobody ever took them. No one ever took the personal days. Listen, that says a lot. But they, I think knowing that if they needed that, that was, that space was there. Of course, I had stipulations to the personal days. I asked that you know, they let me know a day or two in advance or if they already knew that our schedule was booked out, um, you know, even if they reached out to a different staff member to cover them, things like that. But at the end of all of that, if they needed a personal day, those personal days were there. They, they were given personal days where they didn't have to have a doctor's note, all those things in order to have a day off. But I, you know, another thing is I looked at how I was scheduling people. I looked at their personalities. There's so many things that go into hiring an amazing team that's going to support your business and that your business is also going to support who they are and the vision that they have. And a lot of that is found in your brand, right? Understanding who you are as a brand. And last but not least, the fourth um, important thing about building a team is communication. Now, if you're busy being the operator, you probably don't have the time to communicate properly with staff. One of the things that I never did if people were doing things wrong, I didn't uh, call people out in our staff meetings. 
I had one-on-one -on -one time. So I had designated one-on-one -on -one times with my staff regardless, right? This was set in my schedule. I teach all of this hiring um, systems and frameworks to companies and businesses and brick and mortar businesses. Um, two of the ways that you can access the opportunity to um, embrace this hiring framework that I have is one through a VIP day where we spend five to seven hours together. If you choose hiring structure as a VIP day, my normal VIP days, we work on six focus areas of your business. If you choose a VIP day for hiring, that would be our focus, right? So we're not, we wouldn't be focusing necessarily on all six of the, the normal areas that are in a growth strategy day. Um, we would completely be focusing on your hiring systems, um, helping you to create things that are important to you in your policy procedures, the, the hiring process, the team building process. Um, so that's one way to access it. And the other way is through private coaching, which I offer in three, six, and 12 month intervals. Um, there are companies who hire me to come in and train their staff. I have created training programs uh, or helped, let me take that back, <laughs> help companies to create their training programs. Uh, one of the things I did in my business that I know was powerful was to create a training program. It was about a 40 hour training program, which I had figured out that that time, this was for my front desk, uh, took about a good two weeks um, to, to deliver uh, that training program. But some of it was in my interview process, right? Because there, the way I set up my interview process, some of the training started before they ever got in the door. Um, yeah, so, if you're hiring a team, if you have a team, if you've been struggling to hire the right team, I want you to shift your mindset off of feeling like it's the staff and understand that you are the visionary, you are the leader, this is your business, this is your baby, this is your dream. Nobody's going to be as connected to it as you are, but you can definitely hire people are, who are aligned when you have the right hiring systems. If this is you and you know I'm at this space, hiring is what I need in this season. Um, I'll leave the VIP day opportunity in the comments and you can message me here on this page if you want time where I can actually work with you over a time frame. I was speaking with a client who wanted services recently and I gave her um, a link to an opportunity that I had that was short lived. It was. Um, I had opened up some hour spaces, which I hadn't done in a year. She said, I'm gonna need more than an hour. And so if you know that accountability, um, you want someone to hold hands with you as you walk through the process and still be there for more insight over a more elongated period of time, just message me here and I can share um, links with you on how to connect with me for private one-to-one -one time. Listen, your team, it's a big deal, especially if you know that it's time for you to focus more on owning than it is on operating. Maybe you have another new thing that you want to do and you really want to build this stream of income out where it doesn't feel like you're working for the business, but that the business is actually working for you. That's my take. Peace and abundance.